Welcome to another previews podcast on the Chaos and Comics network or podcast. Uh, this will also appear on YouTube on the Chaos and Comics channel. Uh, I guess podcast wise, this is a, appearing as a propaganda show podcast. So my name is Chris, and you can find me at Chaos and Comics on Instagram and Twitter, and also, of course, YouTube. Uh, I have other 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 things that go on in this podcast channel, like movie and 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 music reviews and whatnot. But hey, this is where I this is where I, I put cool stuff like this. So let's uh, let's jump right into it because uh, these can go a little bit long. This is the April releases for Marvel Comics. Uh, I'm not going to go into exact dates. These are basically what got solicited and that you can get in April. So let's start with um, the the non-hero, non-X-Men Marvel Comics, which basically means now all the big licensed properties that have uh, traditionally, at least the last couple decades, been elsewhere, um, particularly, particularly Dark Horse. Most of the, actually all of these that I'm about to mention. So, Aliens is now a uh, a Marvel license. They bought Fox, so it was pretty easy, I guess. Conan's been here, been at Marvel for a couple years now, and then uh, Star Wars is a uh, one of the giant ones. So in April, we will be at issue number two for the new Alien series. I keep calling it Aliens, but uh, uh, but it's not. I think we're just on the alien level right now is all we're doing. So uh, I am I am really excited for this. I haven't been reading the solicits, so I'm not going to talk about summaries or anything here. I know it's Philip Kennedy Johnson and, and Salvador LaRocca. LaRocca has some big fans. I'm not the biggest LaRocca fan, but I also really like him. I think he's really good for licensed stuff. I think when he was doing Star Wars, it worked really well because... Uh, the the action was fine, and and he drew the characters to look like the characters. And um, I just don't I don't see him as like uh, someone that takes a lot of chances, which is something uh, I I generally respect. Um, uh, and then Philip Kennedy Johnson is just a great addition for this. This is this just works, uh, especially after his last God stuff. I think. Uh, uh, not that Alien is like Last God, but uh, it, it's something that makes me excited for him. Uh, and for him to also be doing Superman 2 over at DC, um, it's just a, a real plus for uh, his writing career. So I don't know what's going to happen here. I know that it's just called Alien. This is not called Aliens. It's not called Aliens versus Predator. Uh, we're not like decades in as it feels like we were in the Dark Horse mythology. It's just Alien. So I... M- my guess and my hope is that we're going to get a lot of the the horror tone that we had in the first Alien movie, um, and and expand it from there. But uh, we'll see what they we'll see what Marvel actually does and how they work in the other movies into continuity, or if these are you know these comics could be after Aliens one or two or something like that. So it's something I'm going to wait to find out until after Aliens one. I really want to just experience that one uh, before I. I start finding out whether we're doing, uh, you know, what we're doing in like the way that Star Wars works. Are we, you know, is Prometheus real? You know, what's canon? What's not? Where where are we set here? Uh, Very excited for that. Now there is a Stephanie Hans cover um, or Haynes. I think that's how I found out her name was pronounced recently. Uh, And normally I jump on that, and this this cover's fine, um, but it doesn't look any different or better than other Aliens covers. Um, Conan the Barbarian's back. Jim Zub is still writing him. Uh, I, I don't know what happened. Yeah, after the pandemic, there was a break. I think I was buying Conan. I'm not sure if I finished. I'm not sure if I'm thinking of Savage sort of Conan. So I don't know where I am in the Conan. I'm one of the people that actually enjoyed it, but I'm not like this tried and true Conan fan for years or, you know, that needs it. To be, I mean, the perception is that it's not raw anymore, or something like that, like it was at at, uh, at Dark Horse. But I don't know that that's true. 
So I, I think it was plenty raw and it's, you know, it's just not rapey anymore in my opinion. Um, next up are, uh, you know, no world beaters and I'm, I'm very behind in my star Wars books, but a bunch of really good star Wars books. And they're at a point now, uh, where most of these books are taking place, uh, in between, uh, empire strikes back. And, um, I want to say rise of the Jedi, um, between episodes, uh, four and five, which is really cool. No Han Solo, etc. But, uh, we get the bounty hunters, um, they're already at a number 11. Uh, I really enjoyed, um, Valence. I might be pronouncing his name wrong in, uh, in the couple books he appeared in before bounty hunters. And now he has a big role here. Uh, perhaps he's dead by number 11. I don't know. And there's a, um, and all of these star Wars covers have the, uh, empire strikes back variants, um, that's celebrating the, whatever it is, 40 years, I would imagine. Um, Darth Vader, and who's writing uh, yeah, Ethan Sachs. So, yeah, Ethan Sachs at least wrote the Han Solo book that uh, Valence showed up. Um, I'm sort of reading reading the solicit just to see if Valence is there. It looks like it's uh, run, this is uh, Bosk heavy book. So, who knows? Uh, and then Darth Vader 11, Greg Pak. I am not familiar with Raffaella uh, Ionico. So. Um, Exegol is there. So it looks pretty cool to me actually to get to number 11, uh, start using some of those planets that, uh, have started appearing or being talked about in the, in the, uh, new series. I remember reading Kieran Gillen's run on star Wars and, uh, the solo movie had just come out. And so, you know, you could start adding stuff about that, that Han Solo had been in the empire before, you know, had never been mentioned, but then it was in the movie. So they can talk about it sort of. Um, but so Exegol is a uh, very exciting, very can't wait to catch up to number 11. I have all of these star Wars books sitting around and, uh, I don't know where I put them. I didn't keep them in order cause I've been pre-ordering them at, at G Mart. So I just get confused in where I was. Um, Dr. Afra is uh, still going strong. Uh, I know a couple people that are enjoying this book. They're at number nine though. Uh, Alyssa Wong, uh, did a great job in the first four, that I read, uh, of this version of this volume and, uh, Mink Yu Jung will be new to me. So, um, that's exciting to see what she can do. And, uh, last but not least, actually, did I, what happened to star Wars Star? Oh, here it is. No star Wars 40th anniversary. Number one. Oh, so we, there's actually is a 40th anniversary cover. Um, I was going to say, there's no just Star Wars book this this uh, this month, it appears. That's interesting that Star Wars is being skipped. Uh, the, the main title is being skipped, probably for the Star Wars Empire 40th Anniversary. Um, but uh, let's move on. So, uh, And then what's gotten a lot of um, views lately is... The, the new High Republic push. It was supposed to come out around the time the pandemic started. They just pushed it to January. Uh, I am caught up with the comics so far. I've read the very first book by Charles Soule. So that's uh, relevant because uh, Charles Soule, of course, is a comic book writer and had a great Darth Vader run. Um, and and uh, now I'm in the middle of another book. Um, in April, we'll get uh, Star Wars High Republic number four. Uh, to be honest, I, I've liked it, but the first two issues, at least I've liked them fine, but the art's a little bit simple, like kitty, especially when I contrast it with what I'm about to say. And, um, you know, once you read a couple books, you know, the, the comic can go a little bit slow if you got to wait for a 22 page comic every month. Um, and then, uh, when I compared the art, this is funny because star Wars adventures over at IDW is first supposed to be for, um, younger readers. And when I compared the art to uh, from Star Wars Adventures to this book, um, I thought the art was a lot better in Star Wars Adventures, uh, in my opinion. And that doesn't mean Ario uh, and Indito isn't a good artist. It just felt like maybe they should have been switched there. Um, and then I'll just uh, shout out Trials of Ultraman number two. So apparently that first Ultraman miniseries did well enough that uh, they're on to the second um, 
you know, I've heard people just get really excited for this. Apparently this is the thing they want. They're a little bit older than me, I feel, but apparently this is the thing they watch and that made them uh, excited. So let's hop over to Marvel Comics Heroes and um, first on my list here, my alphabetical list uh, is America Chavez made in the USA two of five. Now a book like this can fall into uh, one of three categories. So this is by writer Kalinda Vasquez and Carlos Gomez. Um, Sarah Pacelli is the cover artist. So one is just that it, it's it's forced and it's obvious. Um, you know they're forcing women and and people of color and it's a bad story and they're just forcing it. And I I don't find that often happens to be honest. Uh, I just I'll admit that it can happen, but I don't find it it often happens. And then where most of this stuff falls, and perhaps America Chavez will fall there. I'm not reading this right now. Is that okay? It's just uh, you know it's time to churn out and and make as much uh, as much content and as many characters that uh, will appeal will appeal to. Um, people of different nationalities and races and, and women, and it's just not all for white males, which is good, you know, and, and this comic doesn't necessarily have to be classic for that. It's just something that should be happening and, and something that it's, it's exciting. And if my pool list isn't that big, I, I go and dip into those things, but they're, you know, they're just adding to the lore essentially. And then there's a small chance that this just becomes super classic, and the like systematic racism that happens and sexism that happens in society, you know, pulls it back a little bit because uh, there's some people that just want to believe the the first thing that I said, right? Um, so I don't know that. I would keep an open mind with this America Chavez book, personally. I just keep an open mind with it. But I'm not reading it, so it's one of those things where I would wait for either someone I really respected to say, hey, man, that's a hidden gem. You know, I've said that about both Swordmaster and Arrow, or someone else to say, uh, or or for it really to just rise to the top and it become a must read. So America Chavez, uh, made in the US, USA. I think this is her second uh, miniseries um, in recent time, at least. So uh, then we get some Avengers. Avengers is on a twice a month schedule right now. Jason Aaron is still writing it. Uh, it's interesting because people uh, have some mixed feelings about it. Um, this current storyline doesn't grab me at all. They did a ghostwriter storyline maybe 10 issues ago, and I thought that was pretty cool. So I, I bought that. And then after that was, um, I don't know what happened, and then there was a Moon Knight story, and I know people that were really into that. I can tell you right now, and, and, and I've considered buying it or reading it. Maybe I'll read it on, on Unlimited um, pretty soon. Uh, but I can tell you that this Phoenix story, I had no interest in at all. I don't know, um, the artist not familiar with, uh, Luca Maresca, at least as, uh, not as far as, uh, you know, I may, I, maybe I've seen Luca Maresca around in, uh, in books and, and enjoyed it or didn't enjoy it and just didn't connect the name. Um, but, uh, after that we get, uh, Avengers 45, which ha has the King in black, um, uh, moniker on it. So it's going to tie in towards the end. Um, and, uh, you know, it's going to, the Phoenix story ends at 44 and then you're going to get a little bit of a King and black thing. Luca Maresca's on that with Jason Aaron too. Um, there's a bunch of these reborn variants that I have no clue what they are. I know that, um, um, Fregi, I can't remember his name that did, uh, the native American variants is, is doing the reborn covers that look similar, but aren't, um, that are, you know, his art style, but not, don't really have that much of a native American feel. So I think it'd be really interesting if that's what these reborn covers are, but I, I don't know. I don't know. So, Hey, the book you didn't know you wanted Avengers mech strike number three of five. Uh, this is a silly number one that I bought where, my only problem with it was really that I didn't see Max to the end. So I really only have four. I'm really only going to get four issues of Avengers and Max. Um, and hey, Avengers and Max right there. You know whether you're going to like this or not. You know, this is, uh, to me, this is more a throwback to He-Man and Thundercats. Like something made specifically because they're going to try to sell me toys. You know, but um uh, really enjoyed that. And then there's a, a Nakayama variant, which uh, I'll be getting uh, for for sure. 
Um, and yeah, the first one was actually not even not good at all, to be honest. Not not even good in the way where I want to tell you it was better than I thought, kind of thing. Like it was just sort of lame because I I didn't get my mechs in time. I wanted. That's what I really wanted, dude. I just wanted Max. Um, by April, we will be uh, on issue two of Beta Ray Bill. Um, and th- that is being drawn by, or drawn and written by the, I was about to say insufferable, but the the wonderful Daniel Warren uh, Johnson, who uh, started doing superhero stuff now. Everyone should go read Murder Falcon. Uh, everyone should go read Extremity, including me. I've only read four issues. Uh, but he did uh, Wonder Woman Dead Earth, a great black label book, perhaps my favorite black label book that uh, came out. And then um, now he's he'll, he'll be on issue two of five of Beta Ray Bill. So who knows where we're going there. But him drawing like Thor and Beta Ray Bill stuff is going to be awesome. His, his art's not for everyone, um, but I think that's because everyone is stupid. Because his art should be for everyone, for sure. Uh, and then we will be, um, a lot of times what happens with, uh, these spinoffs during a big event is they do the spinoff with the event and, and then they, then they do another spinoff afterwards with the character. And that's what, that's what's happening with Black Knight. So, um, King of Black will be over. He had his little three issue mini series there. And then we will be in Black Knight Curse of the Ebony Blade. So Black Knight's going to get some love. In the Marvel Universe, and, and who knows what that means. Maybe that means he'll appear in movies in a year and everyone will be specking or whatever. I would skip this, but um, I see Simon Spurrier's writing it. So it would be like a, a maybe for me. Uh, I'm not pre-ordering it or anything, but I, I really like Simon Spurrier, and uh, it's a writer that uh, I need to read more of. Um, but Alienated was great, as, as you guys probably know, um, if you listen to me at all. And... Uh, and his um, and his uh, Sandman work was also very good. There are a whole bunch of covers for uh, Tanahisi Coates' last Black Panther book. Um, you just you could really just get your choice. The Stormbreakers variant, Carnero, Cabal. Actually, not a ton of really known people. Just a handful. Peach Momoko being probably the most popular there. So. You know, I might read his conclusion. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, it is a big enough book, and uh, I only read uh, the first two or three trades uh, of his run and enjoyed it. Um, you know, I thought that it was considered classic when I was reading it. And then I, I, I found other people saying it was okay here and there. Um, I really liked his uh, his um, galactic Black Panther stuff, the, the little bit I read. So that's probably what I would go to. Um, when I'm ready to go read his his uh, book. Black Widow's on number six. Kelly Thompson's on that. Um, I won't talk much about that. I am excited to see the movie, though. Uh, Captain America, another ta Coates book, is on 29. Seems to be some cool covers for it. I gave up on this around eight or nine. Uh, it was just moving a little bit slow for me. Um, sort of reminds me of the review I just did of a of a, the small axe film. Uh, Lover's Rock. Uh, you know, if you like mood, then maybe that Captain America book was for you. And maybe it's changed in in the last uh, few few uh, months. Actually, more than a year because I probably quit it around eight or nine or something like that. Um, Captain Marvel, another Kelly, Kelly Thompson book with David Lopez, who I also don't know. Um, this is not something I'm reading or, or very interested in. I did love the Captain Marvel movie. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, but I don't read a lot of Marvel heroes right now. Um, just on and off a lot of maybes. I mean, something special or silly has to happen, which is, you know, I'm looking at my pre-orders as I'm reading this and beta Ray bill and Avengers mech strike looks like all I got. Right. And then, of the hero stuff. I got some of the star Wars stuff and, and the alien stuff too. But, um, so far in the heroes, not Spider-Man, not X-Men. That's what heroes means nowadays. Uh, just two, just two. Um, and I think some of it, I feel like it's, uh, being written for younger people to some extent. And that's definitely the case with champions. I mean, it is younger heroes. Um, it's the, the name of this arc is called killer app. 
with uh, Eve Ewing and Bob Quinn. So I know um, a channel I watch called Chillmonger. He watches or he reads um, a lot of this stuff and, and follows Ms. Marvel and stuff. So you could find Chillmonger on YouTube and uh, he seems to go back and forth with the quality of those. So um, I'll leave that up to him. It's not something that grabs me. Here's a book I, I would be reading um, except I got behind and then I, I didn't get all the issues. So it'll definitely be a Marvel Unlimited thing for me and that's Daredevil. We'll be uh, at 29 and Chip Zdarsky is still writing it and uh, Mark Ticetto is still drawing it. I think he's drawn uh, a lot of it or most of it. And uh, people are very excited by it. And and right now I, I, I know, I don't know if this is really a spoiler, if you've seen covers or whatever, I know that Elektra is currently Daredevil right now. Um, uh, and he must have done that in a tasteful way because that's the kind of thing that normally annoys people. Or, or maybe we're just getting better uh, as humans. Who knows? I doubt it. it, was, it was on, January 6th was only a little bit ago. Um, something I'm definitely getting because it's so silly. I don't know why I'm not just grabbing the dollar and 50 cent issues in, in comic shops, but is a dark Hawk heart of the Hawk. So, uh, a bunch of short stories. So it's almost an anthology. There's no way this is going to be good, but, uh, dark Hawk was just a, uh, you know, just so representative of the nineties and, and the nineties were fucking great. So, um, you know, just, <laughs> it was just overdone. Um, did we ever get Dark Hawk versus Shadow Hawk? I feel like we might have. I feel like I might even have that. Maybe I just drew it uh, as a child. So uh, Dark Hawk, Heart of the Hawk. I just need I need Rage and Night Thrasher now. Um, you know, back doing their thing. I just need all the cool stuff. Um, after that, I am grabbing Eternals uh, for sure. Uh, I, I'm a little disappointed. People aren't um, latching on to this. Uh, I... Uh, I've said it before. There are just a few writers that I'm just going to read almost anything they do. Kieran Gillen's one of them. Uh, I feel like I know Kieran Gillen a little bit more. I feel like I'm just, just because my attitude is I'm just going to read it. I'm okay with a, a little bit of a slower burn. My expectation is that this whole book is going to be a, a slower burn. Um, and you know, I, I don't even know how to, give that or take that for people because I've also, people have also told me something's a slow burn and I've gotten bored of it and, and thrown it away, um, or stopped reading it. Red mother comes to mind, you know, even though I like, um, I forget the name of the writer, uh, Jeremy Hahn, I think. Um, so, you know, it, if I stop reading that and then I tell people that it's a slow burn or whatever, then, you know, I, I can't expect people to continue on it, but I'm staying on it. Um, I don't think you need to know anything about the Eternals at all, to be honest. Uh, in fact, it's better that you don't know anything about them because then you're just going to be trying to compare this to Kirby or, or something, which is a, a big mistake. Um, Neil, I think it was, no, Chuck Dixon. or Neil Gaiman supposedly had a good run on it, never read it. I did read a Max uh, miniseries called The Eternal that was based on the Eternals, and that was pretty awesome, to be honest, and that was Chuck Dixon, I think. Um, but this is awesome, too. I, I, I like what's happening, just learning about what's going on. And I love the narrator. The narrator is like the world or the machine or something like that. It's a little bit snarky. So I've enjoyed it. Fantastic 431. Dan Slott is still writing this. Uh, Z Carlos. I don't know if he's been writing or drawing it uh, or how long he's been drawing it. Um, I've actually heard two people that I follow either on um, Instagram or, or, or YouTube or whatever um, say really good things about the last five to eight issues, uh, of this book. Um, I've never been a big fantastic four guy. Uh, I'm open to fantastic four, of course, when something cool happens, but, uh, this is one that, um, I would probably just wait for someone to tell me what the good arcs were and, and then read like an arc or something, um, to say that I, I dipped in and I tried Dan slot fantastic four. Uh, I doubt he's going to be on this for 10 years. Uh, it sounded like you know, he's been on the record more than once, which is weird for writers don't normally do this, saying that he had a great Captain America idea. So we'll we'll find out what happens there. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy. So Al Ewing is now, he's, number 13 is coming up. Uh, Juan Cabal is going to draw it. Rafael Albuquerque on the art. And uh, so he did. he's now beat uh, Donny Cates' 12-issue run. So you know, interesting enough, I guess it wasn't selling Cates' run or... 
who knows what happened? Maybe they just didn't think it was that good. Uh, I don't feel like Kate's thought it was that good. He, he's made uh, comments about him not being able to write team books. Um, uh, it looks like, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy are consistently, you know, a new team. Looks like Nova's leading them, not so much Star Lord. Uh, Gamora's there. And uh, that's not Adam Warlock. There's Hulking and Groot. So it's a, you know, the team is ever changing over there uh, at the Guardians of the Galaxy. It is going to mixing up in what happened with in Empire. I didn't read Empire. Um, but, you know, I like. I like like the space opera stuff from Marvel that I, the cosmic stuff that I've never really gotten into, and so what happened with Hulking and the Kree Skull Alliance stuff? That stuff interests me. I think that's pretty cool. I think those can, those um, those uh, should just keep going to war and stuff. I think it's perfectly fine. I think that's what they should do. So, um. Uh, and then uh, uh, there's a bunch of variants for that for some reason. I, I can't figure out why. Um, Immortal Hulk. Immortal Hulk is still going, guys. It's another Al Ewing book. Um, if not this, then Daredevil. One of those two is pr- are probably the most lauded Marvel books, superhero books right now. Um, and uh, all I've heard all great things. I, I, I guess people say, and I'll probably like it, that it's, it got a little bit weird around you know 25 to 30 or something, but, um, you know, you let Al Ewing do what he's going to do. All kinds of funny stuff, all kinds of fun stuff's happening. Body horror, Hulk's uh, completely different than he ever was. So that excites me, uh, and uh, it means that I need to get past uh, Volume 2. And it's been long enough since I've read Volume 2 uh, that I'm probably just going to start over on that. But uh, I should just probably I should just probably use my Marvel Unlimited. I'm reading Annihilation. Should probably just start Hulk and Daredevil, right? That's what I, I should probably do with, uh, and not spend any more money. Um, I'm going to jump over some of this stuff. Iron Fist and Iron Man. I'm not super excited. I know one person now getting Iron Man, and I think he just is a Christopher Cantwell fan. So uh, good for him. Kafu on the art. So it doesn't sound terrible, but you know, it's just for some reason Iron Man's the center of the MCU. But it's hard to get people excited for his book. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. Maestro, Maestro War and Pax. We'll be getting number four, so the penultimate issue of that miniseries. I really love what Marvel's doing uh, with X-Men Legends, with the new uh, Spider-Man's Darsky book coming out, and Maestro. Just going to the past and, and setting stories in in that part of the continuity again, um, You know, as if we didn't move on from it. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. I liked the maestro, the first maestro miniseries. I have Warren Pax number one. I have not read it yet, um, but I liked it. I thought it was just fun comics to read. It felt like Peter David. It worked for me. Uh, would you know has the first one at least has no chance at like being in my top ten or or you know saying it's lauded or underrated or great. I just think it was pretty cool, um, and uh, I think Warren Pax has a chance to be even more cool because uh, you know the the main villain in the first one was Hercules, and you could tell he was just setting up that he was going to do uh, something more. Um, the Mighty Valkyries. So spinning out of the Valkyries and whatever the Valkyries did in King and Black, Jason Aaron is sticking to the world of Thor. You think he would just have uh, washed his hands of it, but he's sticking in the world of Thor on a uh, on a lesser book. On a lesser book, or, you know, I'm, it's not really lesser. I mean, maybe he just has all these ideas for Jane Foster that he wasn't able to do in Thor. They only wanted her to be Thor for so long. So here here they are, the Mighty Valkyries. Um, and uh, But this is written by uh, Torun Gronbeck along with Jason Aaron. And a another artist I've never heard of. A lot of, um, well, Matea de uh, Ulis. That sounds like it's probably more Spanish or, or from a Latin country. I was going to say a lot of Italians. I'm seeing Marvel hire a lot of Italians, guys. What's going on? Uh, Modoc Head Games. I, I came close to buying this because Oswald's on it, um, but I didn't. And uh, I, there's a YouTube channel named Comic Book Poser. He's a cool guy. He uh, he read it and liked it, but he's the only person I know that, that read it. And I would have uh, I'd have been for it, you know, just because Oswald was uh, in on it and Modoc's sort of a funny character, but. Uh, I didn't get. I didn't get to it. I cannot believe 
that Savage Avengers is still going and it's on number 20. Um, a marvelous Marvel, I'm reading this solicit, a marvelous Marvel team up between Conan and the Rhino. Oh, that just sounds silly. Goes uh, Ari when Spider-Man threatens to ruin their good time. So Savage Avengers, is, as, uh, as many people have realized now, has just become Conan in the Marvel Universe. Uh, and I, I mean, I know people that like it, so what can I say? I mean, I wish I would have bought that instead of the Serpent Crown stuff, you know. Um, next up is a Squadron Supreme Marvel Tale. So these are those overly expensive books that are really just three or four reprints in them. And uh, we're going to get some Squadron Supreme uh, content coming up. That's what this whole Heroes Reborn thing is. So we'll be covering that in the next uh, the next previews. I'm sure Heroes Reborn's out by then. Um, but I, I'm not. That's another thing that just doesn't grab me or interest me that much. Uh, so I'll leave that alone. One of those things will, where I'll wait for everyone just to be flabbergasted and floored by it. And if that happens, that happens. Uh, you know, it's not tough to get books or second prints anymore. Um, well, here's something I am pulling, though. Thor uh, by Donny Cates and most of the time by Nick Klein. I think Nick Klein's art has been wonderful in this book. <coughs> Excuse me, but um, you know others. Others have uh, uh, mixed feelings. So this is the final issue of Prey. So that means I got one more next month, and and then the April. So hey, I've uh, I've enjoyed this. I'm not going to read that solicit. I've in, I've enjoyed this story. Donald Blake has gone crazy. So um, let's see if they can save him. You know, I know a lot of people bat their eye at that. They're they're afraid of it. You know they don't like it. But we'll see. And then a kid's book, Thor and Loki, Double Trouble. Um, man, maybe this book's great. I don't know. I skipped over Superman Smashes the Clan because it looked like a kid's book too. But um, yeah, not, not something I'm I'm jumping on. Something I might buy though uh, is Women of Marvel number one. The Marvel Voices. Um, the Marvel Voices books were really good. There's been a Native American focus book and then a uh, African American focus book, so I enjoyed those a lot. And it wasn't only about the characters because I was reading, I was reading the um, Marvel Voices one that was uh, focused on African American. Um, I, I would have thought characters and creators, but I, I read this one pager about Scarlet Witch, perhaps the you know the whitest woman in the Marvel universe, or not Scarlet Witch, um, uh, Emma Frost. And uh, I was like, I was just waiting for like, like uh, someone else to show up on the page. I was like, oh, the the writer and the artist uh, must be African American. So it's uh, you know, women of Marvel, but this cover looks like it's all women. So who knows what's going to go on there? It is uh, it is something I will check out. Though. And hey, that's it for heroes. Let's uh, hop over to the Spider Man books. Yeah, I mean it's becoming more and more amazing that we can even call a section of Marvel the Spider-Man office. Uh, I'm sure Amazing Spider-Man's doing fine, but it's not exactly something that, uh, you know, people are beating their heart over. I am more or less convinced that in the next month or two months, we'll be getting an announcement that Donny Cates is the new Amazing Spider-Man writer. Uh, if that doesn't happen, I'll be very surprised, but you know, I won't, I won't cry myself to sleep or anything like that. So it would be fine. Um, you know, I, I read a, a couple volumes of this Spider-Man and didn't feel like continuing. I feel like other people are, are pretty annoyed by it. So, you know, maybe Nick Spencer needs to go do something else. I don't know. He's a good writer, so he needs to go do something else, perhaps. Um, Black Cat falls into the uh, Spider-Man office, of course. And uh, Black Cat's actually something I'd be interested in if she's just stealing from famous Marvel characters. That's that's really funny. Um, Carnage, Black, White, and Blood. So we just got the Wolverine, Black, White, and Blood, and now we're getting Carnage. Um, it's going to be hard to avoid this because three of my favorite writers are on it. Um, Chip Zdarsky, Donny Cates, and Rom V. So Rom V is not, obviously, DC uh, exclusive, <laughs> even though he's doing a lot of DC stuff right now. He's getting a story in this Carnage book, too. Um, it says Rom V is an artist, but I doubt, I doubt that. Uh, so, yeah, black. So, I mean, Carnage is black and red, so that works. And then you could put some white. So who needs, who needs color? 
Uh, Miles Morales Spider-Man uh, Solid and Ahmed has been going strong on that for a while. I've picked up issues here and there when they look cool, and and I've enjoyed it. You know, it's weird having two Spider. You know, it's still weird having two Spider-Mans in New York, but um, uh, but then at the same time, I'm happy because Miles is just a great character. He's gonna blow up, um, even though that first appearance blew up. I still think, I still think it's gonna go. It has room to go up. It's one of the few comics that i would spend money and spec on if i really wanted to you know find it and get into it so um a bunch of variants for that because it is uh issue number 25 including a life old deadpool 30th anniversary variant and a reborn variant like we keep seeing um silk is still being uh drawn i guess there's just some people that buy every spider-man book uh every spider-man office book i guess um, Marine Gu and uh, Takeshi uh, Miyazawa are on that. So, um, you know, I don't know anything about Silk, so I would skip it. Um, you know, I bought Scream, which is like Carnage's daughter or something like that. Um, or like the symbiotes, you know, the symbiotes have had lots of, I shouldn't say something like that, but the symbiotes have had lots of babies. And so I liked Scream. That was like a side character. Oh, that was pretty cool. Um, but Silk, I mean, Silk looks cool. I mean, I think she looks cool. This, uh, this cover is, uh, probably not, uh, indicative of, of the interior art, but, um, yeah, the only thing would be sillier is if we had, um, Spider-Man, uh, Curse of the Man thing, which I thought was really dumb, but, uh, hey, give the guy, you know, maybe it's a mini series or it's a one shot. So, but it, it's written by Steve Orlando. So he's starting to do a lot more Marvel stuff. So I'm interested in what he's doing there. I, I like Steve Orlando. I sort of like, I sort of understand how people don't like him, but, um, I still like what he does. So, uh, you know, he gets a good one shot you get a self-contained story. Steve Orlando is a accomplished writer at least. Um, and you don't get a lot of man thing. So why not get man thing with Spider-Man? You know what I mean? Um, this one I'm definitely getting, and that is, uh, Spider-Man spider's shadow. And, um, the reason is it's a new Chip Zdarsky book on Spider-Man. So that's a uh, very exciting, uh, a lot of people would like to see him write Spider-Man, um, more people would like to see him write uh, incre- or, uh, Fantastic Four. But um, he's on another Spider-Man book. And this is another one of those books like uh, X-Men Legends that I just mentioned and or that I'll mention in the future. And um, and uh, the Peter David symbiote, Spider- symbiote Spider-Man book and the Peter David uh, Maestro book that we just mentioned. So what if, P- what if Peter Parker became Venom? What if he didn't let go of the suit and he just became slowly darker and darker? So it's probably going to have like a demon. If you guys, for those of you that have watched Requiem for a Dream, the uh, 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 Hubert Selby Jr.'s other book is like, is the demon or the Joker film or Taxi Driver. Just something where Peter progressively gets darker and darker and doesn't kick the habit, just falls into it. Head first, death. Spider Woman number eleven. I guess it makes sense that she's in the spider, in the Spider Man office. But uh, I mean, who's uh, who's reading this anymore? And also, does she really have anything to do with Spider Man? I I don't know. That's not something that grabs me. And then probably the biggest thing happening in Spider Man, ironically, is Venom. And in April, we are getting Venom's. Uh, is it the 35th issue or is it the 200th issue? It's both. It's both. So you're going to probably just hear in my looking at my pre-orders, there's a good 10 to 15 covers available. Um, and uh, there's probably a tits venom. So that means that there's probably another 20 to 30 store variants available. So, Hey, Lots of covers for you to get for Donny Cates to end this. I am not going to read this solicit. I'm staying away from it, but uh, there's some cool covers. Uh, next up and um, uh, last as far as single issues go is the uh, X-Men office, which is being run by Jonathan Hickman. And some people hate it. Uh, some people think it sounds pretty cool, but it's too many books to read. And those people don't know that for them. I was telling those people you could just read the one or two series that you like um, you know, but then Ten of Swords came and there's no way that you could have followed it without buying every book. So, uh, you know, you, you, you be you X-Men just, uh, dig that hole, dig that hole. Um, 
I've enjoyed every X Men book. I, I can't even tell you which one's my favorite. I think it might be X Force or X Men. Um, those are, I think have been the best books, uh, but are the most consistent, especially X Force with the art. But uh, I like them all. I like them all. I even uh, like X Actor, and I like Hellions. So I like a lot of the new. So let's get to talking about them. First up is we're on cable number ten. I never really understood how Cable can hold his own series uh, and that like Gambit can't or Cyclops can't like, you know, there's a lot of character. I don't know. I don't really get why Cable can hold his own series, but he can. And uh, for the first time ever, I'm buying it month to month. Uh, I have plenty of Cable issues and I've bought Cable when I was like buying Executioner Song or whatnot. But, uh, you know, Jonathan Hickman's just taking all my money. So he, he, he did good. And uh, so I'm buying Cable. Jerry Dug- and Jerry Duggan's been great, and the Phil, no- uh, Phil Noto art has been great too. I'm surprised that we've kept Phil Noto on this book for so long. So I'm sure uh, after this arc or whatever, he'll he'll go on to bigger, better things. We'll also be at Children of Adam number two, and this is probably the only X book I can I've considered not getting, or at least that I'm not as excited about. Um, you know, I just don't care. I just don't care about young people. Um, you know, learning to use their powers. It's happening in Strange Adventures. It's really what X Men is about. Um, you know, and X Men always has one of those running New Mutants, Generation X, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, yeah, I'm not too excited about it, but I do like um, Beat Ayala, and I don't think they have like a Champions Ms. Marvel type book uh, in the X Men uh, in the uh, X Men office. So it works. Um, Excalibur number 20 is out. So this is one of the original books that got released. Teeny Howard still going strong on this Marco, Marcos toe, um, you know, solid artwork. Uh, I didn't love the way he designed apocalypse, but apocalypse is long gone. So it doesn't matter now. Uh, I stayed liking Excalibur at the beginning. Um, this was one, a lot of people dropped, but I, I like the magic twist to it. And then also, um, you know, when, when Ten of Swords started, it turned out that Excalibur was a very important book because uh, uh, Apocalypse was uh, doing his crazy magic shit there. So, and I enjoy that they're dealing with other world and doing their other things uh, there. So, um, a book that you know, I, even though I love it, and it's uh, it's also by Jerry Duggan, who I love, uh, I might think it's a little bit overrated because uh, this is some people's favorite book and I, I've, I've only thought it's been okay I've really liked all the little political intrigue so I like everything about it still um, I think it's just not that it's overrated, I think it just surprises me that uh, so many people like it um, so we're doing the pirate thing still there, they're still called the Marauders and we'll be at number 19 um, somehow they got one behind Excalibur who knows how that happens, and New Mutants is three behind Excalibur so they're even worse Probably my favorite thing about New Mutants is that that um, in uh, in honor and homage to uh, Bill Shinkavich, they are you know they're doing all the crazy weird looking covers. They're not necessarily all Shink- like Shinkavich style covers, but uh, New Mutants is definitely killing the cover game with interesting covers. Um, you know, as I say that, yeah, no, that's an interesting cover too. And Christian Ward did it, so Christian Ward just did the regular cover. So. Uh, I've liked it. I can't remember really what's going on in New Mutants. I just know I like it. Um, so we'll be at Sword number five. So not only does Cable have his own solo book, uh, but he is also one of a, a major character in a, a team book called Sword. And I have no idea what Sword's going to do. It's uh, barely a mutant book, to be honest. But, um, you know, they're in space and there's going to be some space stuff coming. So... Uh, that should be good, and I'm 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 hesitant to read uh, this uh, this solicit. Al Ewing's on it, and uh, Valerio uh, Shitty, I think uh, Shitty, I think uh, I did like the art, but uh, it's not standing out in the way that I would uh, really really super recommend it. But um, yeah, Sword was Sword has been entertaining, especially after first issue that was filled with uh, exposition. That was probably a mistake, but what can you do? The Way of X, uh, so Cy Spurrier is writing this. This is, you know, Cy, Simon Spurrier was mentioned earlier, but this is one I'm definitely getting of his. 
And, you know, is it about a religion? You know, is Night- Nightcrawler's getting his own book, but they don't have to call it Nightcrawler? So who who knows what's going to go on here? I'm excited to see what Cy Spurrier does. I really hate it when people say they're excited to see what happens next. Uh, that's like a trope in comic book reviews. But, hey, uh, I have no idea what's going to happen, and that's why I like it. Um, and uh, I did get the... Uh, uh, Vincentini wraparound variant. So hopefully that's pretty cool. Uh, Wolverine number 11, Ben Percy's been doing a really good job with this. You know, even, even though I'm not uh, super interested uh, generally in like the plots that he's touching on, like vampires and, you know, the Omega red, I love Omega red, but, um, Oh, that murder plot with the flower cartel or something. But then when I read it, I enjoy the, the hell out of it. Right. So, you know, I, what do I want from Wolverine? I don't know. I think that's the other problem, too, is that I'm admitting I don't re- actually know what I want from a Wolverine comic. I mean, he's doing the things that people think Wolverine should do, like sit in a bar and get in fights and stuff. So, you know, I don't actually know what I want from a Wolverine comic, so I'm just going to shut up and read it. And that's been good for me because I've really enjoyed what Ben Percy has done. Uh, X-Force, number 19, I think has been the best art. Of course, Gary... I say that, and Gary Brown's the artist in this issue, but uh, Joshua Kassara did the cover. So let's see how different that's going to look, and, and uh, we'll compare in April. We'll compare Gary Brown's art to uh, Joshua Kassara. Um, uh, it looks like we're in a. Uh, it looks like we're still uh, mired in Shadow King stuff, which I really, really like. Uh, and then look at that. So. No more Hickman verse. This is a, another one of those that I just mentioned a bunch of times. Um, books that happened in an earlier continuity. So X Men Legends. Um, I thought Nizieza would still be writing it, but it's not. It's Louise Simonson and Walter Simonson drawing number three. The original X Factor returns to battle Apocalypse. Oh, so this is going to take place probably right around um, X Men like between five and 20 or something like that. Let's find out. Let's find out. Uh, the mutants once known as the original X-Men now fight the good fight as the mutant team X factor. That's cool. I collect these. I try to grab those, um, early X factor books whenever I can see, whenever I see them for cheap with the exception of a couple first appearances like apocalypses together with their mysterious sentient spaceship ship and the newly transformed archangel. So it's after number 20, um, They've defeated Cameron Hodge and or 25 and foiled Apocalypse's scheme. But as ship starts to malfunction, Apocalypse's true plan unfolds. Return to this era with uh, legends Louis Simonson, Walter Simonson. Oh, uh, uh, yep. Uh, so all new tales set before X Factor 43. So that is very exciting. Now I'm wondering where what happens in X Factor number two or X Men Legends number two. Because uh, number one was cool, but it was like. Uh, and he has this, uh, you know, continuing a, a story that it looked like Marvel tried to throw away at the time. So, but this one's awesome. And then uh, we'll close this out. I'll just talk a little bit about collected editions. There's an Aliens Volume 2 get coming out. Um, that's actually a great deal. Uh, but I missed Volume 1. And then uh, Amazing Spider-Man. All the stuff that you expect. Epic collections. Um, a bunch of old stuff. The only one I want to point out is... Um, is the Marvel, oh, well, Ghost Rider, Robbie, I'm getting this, Robbie Reyes, complete collection, so everything Robbie Reyes in a, in a trade paperback. Um, how many pages is that? Because that's still 26 bucks. Uh, 432 pages, so it's a nice it's a nice book there. Um, as uh, Marvel, August 1961. I'm not buying this because it's so expensive. Even with the 35% off, it's 97 bucks. Uh, it's going to retail at 150. But uh, Marvel, Marvel, August 1961 omnibus. So that is the month that uh, Fantastic Four number one first came out. Uh, you know, changed changed comics forever. Uh, probably, you know top five most influential releases for sure without a doubt obviously superman and batman so this is probably number three uh, arguably more than batman but who knows i'm not going to argue that but what's cool about this is that you get that book of course in august 1916 but you get all the other crazy stuff that was not very superhero-ish 
that was what Marvel was publishing at the time um, before starting like the age of superheroes. Things like Student Nurse and Millie the Model, uh, Tales to Astonish, Gunsmoke Western, Love Romances. So I'm not going to get it because I don't actually think those are very interesting books to read. But I do think it's really cool. And I would think it would be really cool if Marvel just kept publishing like every month in some giant omnibus. But what do I know? I'm not even buying it. So obviously it's a terrible idea to, to do that in any, any, any form and fashion. And last but not least, before we close up, um, the what if omnibus is available for volume one for that first, uh, volume of what if, and, uh, it's a pretty good price, $65 with the discount, hundred dollars, uh, retail, uh, and it's uh, 776 pages. What's interesting about it, though, is that it does skip "What If" number 16, and it was the it was a Fu Manchu one, which is not not something we do anymore. Um, you know, Fu Manchu is considered a bit racist, a bit racist. But uh, so uh, it's crazy that it's omitted from the uh, "What If." Um, it's not that crazy. It's expected, but. It feels like a big hole where you go, what if one through 15 and, and 17 through 22, we just skipped over it. So anyway, guys, that is the Marvel previews for, or the, all the releases that are happening at Marvel in April of 2020. Thank you guys for listening. If you got this far, uh, hanging out with me, listening to what's going on, just a silly little podcast about comic books here. And uh, you can find me at Chaos and Comics on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. You can talk to me at any of those places. Uh, I will answer you and talk to you about comics and, and fun stuff like that. Um, I'm not, I mean, I'll recommend stuff to you if you really want, but uh, I'm not a big uh, recommender. I'm more of a let's talk about what you think about what you read kind of thing. So, anyway, thank you guys for listening. You guys have a great day or night.